What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream. How's it going? How's it going? So, uh, sorry, I'm running a couple minutes behind schedule, but we're all good. We're just getting the whiteboard set up and ready to go. So, today we are continuing with the super cram week for super math review for the SAT, which is coming up on Saturday. So, it's fast approaching. And we are completing the May 4th calculator test today. And let's actually get this all queued up here. We'll get to the beginning. All right. All right. So once again, this is a test that I took in May. I took the official test. I got an 800 on the math uh, and that when I actually sat for it. So we're going to go over this test and I'm going to be knocking out this entire thing. Now, if you're new to my live streams, if you haven't seen these before, what these are all about is I am doing this in real time, which means I'm setting a timer and I'm taking it for real. And I've got my calculator queued up here in case I need it. And I'm going to take it authentically as authentically as I can. Now this, usually I like to take them blind as if I've never seen it before, just like I'm a student. I've actually taken this one, as I told you, it got it perfect on the math. So I have seen all these questions before, but within the time frame, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna explain everything simultaneously. So let's set the timer. Hold on. <clears throat> 55 minutes. Okay. We are going to start in, hold on, let me just make sure no questions. All right. We're going to start in five, four, three, two, one. Let's do it. A car sharing service charges $6 per hour to rent a car plus $10 fee for insurance. Done. They just want an equation and it's C equals, oh, they put T instead of H, 6T plus 10. Done. That's it. Straight away. Next, number two. If Y equals this and Y equals 11, plug and chug, when X equals 1, what is the value of A? I just plugged in this Y value here and the x value for the x there and there, right? So let's now solve. So I have 11 equals 1 squared is 1a plus a is 2a minus 1 minus 1, 2a equals 10, and a equals 5. Done. Oops. <clears throat> Next, the scatter plot above represents the head length lengths in centimeters of, hold on. Scatter plot above represents the head lengths in centimeters of body lengths and centimeters of 14 crocodiles. Line of best fit for this data shown, and we have, and the box plot summarizes the body lengths. Okay, so this is all about body lengths and head lengths. For an adult crocodile with a head length of 30, right here, uh, which of the following is close to the body length in centimeters predicted by the line of best fit? It's right here, which is like 220. That's it. I don't even know, or 215 will be the best answer. I don't know why they provided this. Let me just make sure I didn't mess it up. I don't remember this one. I had a plot of the line of best fit. For an adult crocodile with a head of 30, what is, which of the following is the close to the body length predicted by the line of best fit? Yeah. Oh, there's probably two questions to this maybe. Hold on. Yeah. Based on the line of best fit, the following, which is the best estimate of the increase in predicted body length? Increase in predicted body length in centimeters for every 10 centimeter increase in head length. Okay. So as this goes up by 10, so basically we're going from here. Here, let's do it in blue. We're going from here to here, right? And it looks like we're going up by like maybe 80. 75 looks good. Okay, because you see how we climbed like from here to here, and it's a le it's less than a hundred, but it's close to a hundred maybe. So I say seventy five is our best bet. And then number five, based on the box plot, which the following is the best estimate the median. Now all you got to do is know that for a box plot, they keep asking these questions lately. The median is that middle line. The median looks like three twenty, and there it is. Okay, good. If 5x minus 7 equals 13, okay, shortcut for this is if I, I can see right away, if I double this, I get 10x minus 14, so just double both sides, 
and 2 times 13 is, oops, is 26. Let's not circle that, circle that. 7. We got an x and y table here. In the, in the table above, the ratio of y to x for each pair is constant. What is the value of k? So what they're saying is this is a proportionate equation. That's what they're telling you without saying it. And they're trying to find this k value. And if this is proportionate, all I got to do is plug in any of these y's. Let's plug in that one. And plug in any of the corresponding x's. Let's plug in the 1. 4 equals 1 times k. Uh, that's it. So k equals 4. So it's y equals 4k. 4x is the equation. But they just want the the k value. Oh, wait, what, what? Did I have to do that backwards? How did I get 4? Oh, k is down there. Never mind. Sorry, they tricked me because they used two different things. So then it's one, it's uh, 160. Because all you're doing is you're, you're constantly multiplying the x value by 4. This is how you do a proportionate equation. They happen to also use k in the table. So to go from x to y, we're multiplying by 4, multiplying by 4, multiplying by 4, multiplying by 4. 4 times 40 is 160. Okay. Next, which of the following is equivalent to this? Distribute, that's all we're doing. 2a squared times a is 2a cubed, right? We add the exponents. a squared times a to the first is a cubed. Plus 6, multiply the coefficients, a squared. Number nine, the graph above shows the temperature in a room during a day when the thermostat malfunctioned. For which of the following two hour periods was the difference between the max and the min temperature is the greatest? Okay. So first we have one to three. We have one, two, three. It looks like there's not much difference in the max and the min. The max is maybe here. The min is there for this time zone. It's pretty small. Then let's do three to five. So it's three. Let's make that three to five. That looks a lot different, right? That looks like this is the min of that time period, which is like 50, and that's almost 70. So that's like a difference of 20. I'd say this top one is a difference of like five. Let's say five to seven. Let's do it in purple. To seven. We're looking at a difference of maybe 15. And seven to nine. Let's do it in red. Looks like a difference of there's the max and there's the min, like a difference of seven. So I'm going with B, of course. Definitely the biggest difference. What is that? Nine, ten. In the population of snow leopards in a certain area can be modeled by the function P defined above. Of the following, which is the best interpretation of the equation P of 30 equals 550? This means in 30 years, so in 2020, 30 years after 1990, the population of snow leopards will be 550. Snow leopard population is predicted to be 30 to, no. Predicted to be, no. Predicted to be 550 in the year 2020, not 2030. That doesn't make any sense because it's after 1990, not 2011. Um, okay, which of the following changes to the graph? Changes to the graph of the equation will result in that. All right. Uh, oh, it's just simply this, and then they shifted it six units down by subtracting six. So shift six units downward. Anytime we have a minus at the end of a function, like we have a function that we minus six plus 10, whatever, that's a vertical shift. And that's it. All right, number 12. Tiny earns thirteen fifty per hour at her part time job. When she works Z hour, she earns blank. This is thirteen fifty Z. Which of the following expressions gives her gives the amount in dollars Tiny will earn if she works three Z hours? Three Z times thirteen fifty. That's it. Um, it's this one. It's same thing. It's they just move stuff around. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah. Because everything is multiplying. That's a commutative property. All multiplies together. It doesn't matter where we put stuff if it's all multiplying each other. The table above gives the number of United States presidents from this then to this whose age at the time they first took office was within the interval. So the ages. I think this graph got messed up. 65. Oh, I see. So 400. Oh, got it. I see. There's supposed to be a line here.
like that. Okay, so 40 through 44, there was two. 45 through 49, there was seven. Okay, whatever. Of those presidents who were listed at least 50 years old when they took office, of the presidents who were listed, who were at least 50, so it's from this bracket down, what fraction were at least 60? So we've got of the of this. So there's a total. The total population of at least 50 is 13, 11, 24, 31, 34. And out of that, how many were at least 60 in this pocket, which is 10? So it's 10 out of 34. Where's the multiple choice? Oh shoot! It must not have been included. So, anyways, I'll double check that one. Whatever it is. It should reduce to 5 over 17, okay? Yeah, all right. Next is this guy, system of equations. What's the following graphs in the xy plane could be used to solve the system of equations? So, oh, the aka, we got to figure out what these graphs look like. So the top one, let's isolate y to do that. F 5y equals negative x plus 5. Divide by 5, y equals negative 1 fifth x plus 1, right? So we know that, that that's that one, and this one is negative y equals negative 2x minus 4. y equals 2x plus 4, multiplying both sides by negative 1. So here's one equation, here's the other. This has a negative slope, that is a positive slope. So let's see. This one is looks good for the negative 1 fifth x. This does not look good because this is a, oh no, sorry, that's a positive 1 fifth slope. No, no, this is out. B is, no, that doesn't make sense. There's no one negative one-fifth. This looks like a negative one-fifth slope right here. It's probably C. And then it has a y-intercept of one, which we like. And then this is a y-intercept of four for the second one and a positive slope of two, up two over one, up two over one. So it's definitely C. All right. 15, in the figure above, A, F, B, E, A, F. B, E, and C, E are parallel. And points B and E lie on A, C, and F, D, yeah. If A, B equals 9, and B, C equals 18.5, okay. And F, E equals 8.5, what is the length of E, D? All right, there's a really nice thing we can do with this. It's called the side splitter theorem. You don't need to know that, though. Just think logically, This these are cut proportionately when they're all parallel and they have this thing. So you can set up a proportion like this, 9 over 18.5 equals this over this equals 8.5 over x. Then cross multiply. 9x equals 8.5 times 18.5. 157.25. And then divide both sides by 9. This isn't actually in exactly the, the side splitter theorem, but it this will work. Divide it by 9. So what the? Oh, it rounds up to 17.5. And really what it is, it's actually EF is over, FD is proportionate to AB over AC, but it'll still work, and we can, we can prove it. Uh, if this is 17.5 approximately, it's like 18.5 over... 25, 26 equals 9 over 27.5. 9 plus that, um, 8.5 over 26. Is that, and then 9 over 27.5. So they're pretty close to each other, roughly. Um, so I think that's good. All right, next. 16. School particip- uh, club participation in, wait, hold on. Let me just make sure that I do that. I want to make sure if I didn't do that incorrectly because if I, 9 over 20, wait, 9 over 20. This would be the, the actual right way to set it up, but I, I know you can usually take that shortcut, 8.5 over plus x, 8.5 times 27.5. times 27.5 equals 
233 points. That's cross multiplication. 7, 5 equals, and then 9 times 8.5. Point five, yeah, minus. I'm just gonna do a quick check. Negative one fifty seven point two five. Yeah, it's the same exact thing. Fourteen point seven. Okay. Anyways, sorry about that. Just double checking my work quickly. Don't don't worry too much about what I just did. Just do it the way that I did it the first time. All right. Next club participation in two thousand fourteen is this. <clears throat> of all juniors and seniors who attend a particular high school during the blah, 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 149 participated in the clubs listed above. Each of the 149 students participated in only one of four school clubs listed. Table shows the distribution of the 149. Okay, the band was composed of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. If 30% of the students in the band were juniors, so 0.3 of the people in the band were juniors, Oh, but the band has more. So point. So the total in the band is X. So 0.3 of the whole thing, or 30% of the whole thing, were juniors. And juniors constitutes 18. How many students were in the band? We got our equation. Now we isolate. Divide by 0.3, and I know that's 60. Okay. Next, uh, same deal. Of the number of juniors and seniors in the drama club, 25% who walked to school, rep the 25% who walked to school represented represent one eighth of the total number of juniors and seniors who walked to school. Okay. So of the number of juniors and seniors in the drama club, juniors and seniors in the drama club. So 48, 25% of these guys, so 0.25 of 48. You can use your calculator if you want, but it's basically like dividing by four, so it's 12. Those 12, the 25%, those 12, represent one eighth of the total juniors and seniors who walk to school. So then 12 equals one eighth of the total that walk to school, AKA one eighth X, that's our unknown. How do we solve? Multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is eight, and eight times 12 is of course 96. 18. A bag containing 10,000 beads of assorted colors is purchased from a craft store. So you estimate the percent of red beans, beads, a sample of beads is selected at random. The percent of red beads in the bag was estimated to be 15%, with an associated margin of error of 2%. So I would give you low as 13% as high as 17%. If R is the actual number of red beads in the bag, which of the following is the most plausible? Okay. So it's between 17% of 10,000, which is 1,700, and 13% of 10,000, which is 1,300. That's how we do margin of error. It's plus 2 or minus 2. So R is in between these guys, and that's it, which is B. Okay. 19. For the linear function table above, give some value of x and the corresponding values of f of x. Let's do a little line here. Okay, which of the following equations defines f? It's linear, right? So we know that my, let's first calculate this. The y-intercept is c, so it's gotta be just c out here, right? Because when x is zero, y is c. So no three c, no three c. So it's either these two. And then what's the slope? Let's take two values. So I'll take two c minus c, right? Subtract the y's over the difference of the x's over one minus zero. We're subtracting up. That becomes c over one. So it's a slope of c, which is this guy. If x is a solution to the given equation, which of the following is a possible value of x plus five? Okay, first thing, I've always told you guys this. If you see something down here that's quadratic and you don't know what to do, just factor. That's it instinctively, and this breaks up into x plus five times x plus five. Well, guess what? We're trying to find x plus five, right? So we can now, um, let's see, what's the best play here? This has to equal, uh, wait, is this the best play? Yeah, I can do it like this. 
it means that, uh, okay, watch this. One over, that becomes x plus five squared equals four. Let's multiply both sides by x plus five squared. And then divide both sides by four. And then we get x plus five squared equals one fourth. And then take the square root of both sides and I get x plus five equals one half, plus or minus. But it's, would I, and I see one half right here. Okay, and that's it. Uh, if I plug this back in, it, it works, right? Because this becomes one half times one half, which is one fourth, one over one fourth is four. So that's it. The graph of a line <clears throat> in the xy plane is a is at a point the graph of a line in the xy plane here let's zoom in a little bit has a positive slope and the intersects the y axis at a point that has a negative y coordinate which of the following could be an equation of the line so m equals positive b equals negative all right so let's isolate this one we have to get into slope intercept form so this becomes 2y equals positive 3x minus 5 it looks like the slope is going to be positive and the y-intercept is negative. It's a. Did I do that right? Yeah, it's definitely a. This would be a positive y-intercept. That's no good. This would be a negative y-intercept, but a negative slope. So that's gone. And this would be a positive y-intercept. And that's wrong. OK. 22, f of x equals negative 500x squared plus 25,000x in revenue. Company receives from sales of product given by the function above. X is the unit price and whatever. The graph of a plane intersects the x-axis at zero and a. What does a represent? Okay, here's the deal. This is like a parabola upside down, right? Because it's a quadratic and this part's negative. So the starting value of hitting it at zero, it just means the, the revenue when we've got, uh, when the unit price is set to zero, okay? That's the first point. But here's my a value. So this is a price per unit. So it's like there's some max revenue value here where if I set the price to this, I'm going to max out, and that's great. But then if I keep going and keep raising the price, eventually I'm going to hit zero. So it's the so A is the price at which <clears throat> the revenue goes to zero. It's not max revenue. It's definitely not this. It's this. Okay. The graph of the equation, the blah, 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 is a line where A and K are constants. If the line, if the line contains the points this and this, where's the value of K? Okay. First of all, I'm going to get this, get this as crazy as it sounds. I'm going to get this in a slope intercept form. Okay. Uh, or maybe I don't need to. Oh, yeah. I don't think you need to. I think I did on the test, but I don't think you actually need to. I am going to... Oh, let's, pl let's just plug in 0, negative 3. So a times 0 plus k times negative 3 equals 6. This goes away, and we just need to solve for k, and that's it. Divide both sides by negative 3. k equals negative 2. That's it. Plug and chug. Done. 24. For two, from 2005 to 2014, the number of music CDs sold in the United States declined each year by approximately 15% of the number sold the preceding year. Okay. Uh, in, the pro in the year 2005, 600 were sold. The following, which best models that see the number of CDs sold in T years after 2005? So look, this is a nice exponential equation. And we're always starting with, this is the starting point, this number right here. So we know it's got to be 600. It's 600 in all of these, so that doesn't help. But then we do, in here, it's 1 plus whatever the rate is which it's growing or decreasing to the t power. Now in this case, it's decreasing by 15, so that's negative 0.15. So one minus 0.15 should be 0.85 to the t. 0.85 to the t, and there it is. It's gotta be less than one if it's decreasing. This is not it though. This is decreasing by 85%, not 15. Next is 
this guy. Function G above models the growth rate of a certain plant in millimeters per day. In terms of the watering time in minutes per day, what is the meaning of this? Got it. Okay. <clears throat> This means we're plugging T, we're plugging 5.51 in for T. So this means the watering time of 5.51 minutes results in whatever this growth rate value is, which we don't actually need to solve. So watering time of 5.1, yeah, that's it. It's this one. Plant growth rate of, this is wrong because that's in for T, not G. Watering time increase. That's wrong. It's not even a constant slope, so that's that's what this is describing. No. No, this is just a singular value, singular coordinate. Psychologists designed and conducted a study to determine whether playing a certain educational game increases middle school students' accuracy in adding fractions. For the study, you chose a random sample of 35 students <clears throat> from all the students at one middle school in a large city. Psychologists found the students who played the game showed significant improvement in accuracy when adding fractions. What is the largest group to which the results can be generalized? So since they say it's a random sample from this middle school, not from middle schools in the area, a random sample from this middle school, it can only apply to this middle school, okay? From all of the students at one middle school. So all the students, no, definitely not this. All students at the school. Of course it applies to them, but it's probably never going to be your answer because that's like, I mean, it is them. I mean, that's, but that's obvious. Okay, 27. A manufacturer determined that, that right, right cylindrical containers uh, kind of messed that up, but that's okay. Boom. Pretend it's a right cylindrical container. That containers with a height that is four inches longer than the radius. So this is R plus four. <clears throat> this is R. Are the optimal number of containers to be used on the shelf? Which of the following expresses the volume V in cubic inches of such containers? All right, this is literally just look up the formula for volume of a cylinder and plug it in. So it's pi r squared times h. But in this case, h is just r plus 4. And then distribute, boom, boom. That's pi r cubed plus 4 pi r squared. D. For the function blah, blah, blah. What is the value of f of 6? This just means plug 6 in for, wait a minute. No. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. So, got it. <clears throat> if we're plugging in six to, to the function, I think we're just plugging in two really, right? So we're plugging in two here. And then two minus six, I feel like it's negative four. I can't, wait a minute. Let me think about this question for a second. I know I got it. It's a, if F of three X, oh, which means that f of x is simply x over 3 minus 6. Because if I plug in f of 3x, okay, then if I plug in f of 3x into this equation, we get 3x over 3 minus 6, which is, gives us the x minus 6. So this is the actual function. And then yes, and I plug six in for this, and I get six over three, which is two minus six is four. All right, so I think both ways work. I do think it's negative four. I can't remember, but I think that's right. Okay, next is system of equations. 
If the system of equations has an infinite number of solutions, what is the value of A? All right, you just gotta know what that means. It means if it's infinite, it means they're overlapping. They are the same, all right? Now, if these are the same, hold on, uh, that means, oh, that's why. All right, the key is that there's no coefficient for Y. So in, in the second equation, but these are the same. I mean, not, not that there's no coefficient, the coefficient is one. So I can get this top equation looking like that by multiplying it by three, because we're trying to link these guys together to have some commonality, and then everything else should match up. Then like whatever this value is will be C, this value will be A, because they're equivalent, they have infinite solutions. So I multiply that, I get three over two X plus Y, which is what we wanted, equals three times one six, which is one half. Right, because three six or becomes one half. So we want to find a, and a is now this value in front of the x because it matches up there, and so the answer is three over two. That's it. Right, I think that's right. Next, thirty. A researcher surveyed two hundred adults selected at random from the city of Edley and three hundred from the suburbs. Each person surveyed was asked whether he or she owns a car. Some of the results shown in partially completed table. Okay, the researcher found. The researcher found that an adult surveyed in the suburbs of Adley, in the suburbs of Adley, is twice as likely to own a car as an adult surveyed in the city of Adley. So in the city of Adley, the likelihood is 80 out of 200 total, right? And they say that in the suburbs, X out of 300 is twice as likely as this value. That's what they're saying. So the probability on this side of owning a car in the suburbs, again, X is owning a car, X out of 300, is double what it is in the city, which is city is 80 over 200. Okay, and this is the proportion. So now we can simplify X over 300 equals 160 over 200. Cross off the zeros, divide both by four. X over 300 equals four over five. Cross multiply 1200 equals 5x, divide by 5, divide by 5. My trick for dividing by 5 is dividing by 10 and then doubling it. So divide by 10, it's 120, doubling it, 240. Okay. Free response. Pure beeswax has a density of 0.555 inch ounce per cubic inch. An online company sells pure beeswax at a price of $8 per ounce. Wait, what is the selling price in dollars per cubic inch for pure beeswax when purchased from this company? Wait, eight dollars per ounce. Eight per one ounce, eight dollars. Hold on, let me think about this for a second. Per one ounce. And then it's 0.555 ounces per one cubic inch. There, there it is. So really all I'm doing is multiplying eight times 0.555. Eight times. $4.44. Now I'm just gonna think about this and see if this makes sense. So, so one ounce, yeah, it makes sense. One ounce cost me $8. A cubic inch is less than one ounce. It's, it's about half an ounce, 0.55, five ounces. So it makes sense that it should be about half $8, which is 444, it makes sense. Okay, next. The mean of the list of numbers is what fraction of the sum of the five numbers? I mean. This is obviously, well, anyways, let's just do it. I would, this is how I would, I, I know that it's one fifth because that's what you're doing, right? You're taking the sum and dividing it by five. So the, the mean has to be one fifth, but if you're not sure, let's just do it anyways. Two plus 10 plus three is 15, plus seven is 22, plus six is 28. So the mean is 28 over five, the sum is 28. So what is the fraction of the sum of the five? The mean is what fraction? So it's 28 over five 
over 28. And we can put that over 1 if you want. This multiplies up. This multiplies up. So now I have 28 over 5 times 28. These guys cancel out. And look, I get 1 fifth. Okay, x plus 6, blah, blah, defines a circle. What is the radius? Okay, you just got to have the circle formula memorized. This is the center is at negative 6, negative 3 because of these values, and the radius is the square root of that, which is 11 because this is always r squared. A baker is gathering the ingredients required to make 15 batches of oatmeal, cookies, and one cake. The cake will require one quarter bag of flour. Hold on. Cake will require one quarter bag of flour. And the baker needs a total of more than three, but less than four bags. What is one possible value for the fraction of one bag of flour required for each batch of cookies? Okay, so it's like we're already taking a quarter of a bag for the for the cake, and then we've got 15 times some value of the flour. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up for the outer examples. Like, first I wanna know what's gonna get me three, then I wanna know what's gonna get me four, and then I'm gonna choose a value in between those, okay? So this is gonna be 15x equals, subtract one fourth from both sides, and that becomes two point, let's just decimal, 2.75. And then divide both sides by 15, divide both sides by 15. So I have 2.75, 2.7, equals 0.183. Uh, I don't like that as a thing. Hold on. Let's make it, um, let's keep it a fraction. Four times that is 8, 11, it's 11 sixtieths, okay? Well, you could probably put it in as a decimal. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it like this. So 11 sixtieths, because it's asking for a fraction. Then this one is 15x. Oh, I did the subtract. That was, oh, yeah, no, that was right. 15x, let's subtract a quarter from both sides, subtract a quarter from both, from both sides. And we get 3.75 divided by 15 divided by 15. And this, again, would be, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4. And we get 15 over 60, uh, which reduces to 1 fourth. Hold on. Is that right? 2.75. Hold on. 11 sixtieths. Yeah, yeah, it's 11 sixtieths. So it's between, actually, I'm going to leave it like this. So it's between 11 sixtieths and 15 sixtieths. So I'm going to choose 12 sixtieths. In between these two, it's going to give me more than three but less than four. And 12 sixtieths reduces to one fifth. So I'm just going to put in one fifth as my answer. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right, 35. The histogram summarizes the distribution of data composed of 50 integers. So these are 0 through 5, 5 through 10, whatever, whatever. The first bar represents the number of integers that are at least 0. Okay. What is the possible value of the median of the data set? So, the median, so these are 50. The median is going to occur in between the 25th and the 26th. 25th and 26th value, okay? Because we're going to have 1 through 25 and then 26 through 50. This is 25 values. This is 25 values. So it's in between those two. That's when it's an odd number. So we got to find the 25th or where that value is. So here's 12 values. Here's 9. So now we're at 21. Here's another 9. 21. We're at 30. So the first 30 are all in here. And we know that since 21 stops at this point, we know that 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 are all in here. Therefore, the bucket is going to be in here for the median. And that bucket is any number between 10 and 15. So a possible value for the median, I'm just going to say 12. Nice and in the center of 10 and 15, roughly. Um, and it's got to be an integer. So there you go. 
Next, in the equation above, the kinetic energy, blah, 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 is given in terms of the speed. If the equation is rewritten in the form, okay, all they want you to do is isolate V. What is the value of A? And A is whatever's out there. Well, two-step problem. First, let's just isolate V. 200 over 2 reduces to 100. K equals 100 V squared. Then we divide both sides by 100. Divide both sides by 100. V squared equals K over 100. And then we take the square root of both sides, right? And V equals square root of K over 100. I can take the square. This is really K times 1 over 100, right? I can take the square root of 1 over 100 because it's 1 tenth. 1 10 times 1 10 is 1 over 100, so there you go. And then times that square root of k is stuck inside. So what's the value of a? a is just the value out front, so therefore a is this, and a is 1 10. Two questions left. 37. The line graph above shows the population in thousands of people living in Alaska every 10 years from 1999 to 2000. What was the population of Alaska in thousands in 1990? It's right there, 64, th oh wait, hold on. That's 1900, sorry. 1990. It's 550, and they want it in thousands, so they don't want you to say 550,000. You can't anyways on the grid, and so you just say 550. That's 1990. Okay, last problem. The ratio of the population of Alaska in 1980 to the population of Alaska in 1970 can be written as A to 1. A to 1 equals population of 1980 to 1970. But now we need to actually get the values. I just wrote that as a placeholder. And what is the value of A they're asking? So we say A to 1 equals... 80 is 402, 1970 is 300. A over one is just A, by the way. <laughs> so this is your answer, but we want to, well, that's too big to enter as a fraction. Uh, let's see what is a decimal, 402. 1.34, that's the value of A. Done. All right. Let's just uncircle this. That's not our answer. It's not where. Oh, 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 oh. Please tell me I did something glitch now. No. Don't glitch, my friend. Okay, good. Oh, it went away. It worked. All right. I'm going to stop the timer. Uh, again, if you have this much extra time on the test when you take it, you need to spend that time to review your answers. Don't just finish and toss it in. Check your work, and you should actually flag problems as you're going through it that are a little bit trickier that you want to take a second look at and start there first. That's the best way to do it. I usually put a little star asterisk against those questions. Now, let's check the answers. math with the calculator. Here we go. All right, so we got A, D, B, B. A, oops. A, D, B, B. C, C, D, D. C, C, D, D. Then we got B, C, D, A. B, C, D. Then I've got, this is the one without multiple choice. 13 was, did I give the answer? Hold on. Five sevenths. Okay, so they didn't reduce it. They left it as ten thirty fourths, but same thing. Okay.
Next is 14 is C B D A. C B D A. And 18 is B. Oh, wait, did I miss nine? Uh-oh. Oh, shoot, did I not do 19? Shoot, I didn't do it. Okay, let's solve 19, I guess, right now. So I'll keep the timer going. I did do this one. I know I did this one. Where is it? Hold on. Mm, there it is. Okay, 19 is C. All right, so I'll stop the timer. Okay, C A A C C A A C twenty three is A B A B A B twenty seven is D B D D D B D, B, D, D. Okay, and then we got the for your sounds good. So all those are correct. Then we got 4.444, uh, which I wrote there. I didn't circle it, but. And then 32 is 1 fifth, which I said. 33 is, I'm sure, is 11. 34, they said X could be between 11 sixteenths and 1 fourth, right? So that's what I put as the range. So that's why I chose 1 fifth, and, which is 0.2. Um, totally fine in between that zone. So they're pretty flexible on that one. That's nice. And then 35 is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, put 12, uh, 1 tenth, 550, and 1.34. Okay, cool. Those are the problems. Let's see if there are any questions. Do you have any tips for people who are not good at math at all? What does that mean? Oh, the screen was blurry. Was the screen blurry throughout or it just got blurry because I just zoomed out? I mean, when I was really zoomed in before. But anyways, Grace. So Grace, like, I am, when I'm doing these problems, I'm doing them pretty quickly, right? You might, I'll tell you what. Um, my, have you checked out my video course? My video course, it, you can get it in the link below. And it's a little bit different. It's slower paced. The explanations are not like this fast. And you have a critical concept reviews before each topic so that you, you're not just diving into practice problems. You're actually laying a foundation. That might be something that's worthwhile for you. This is more for like the last minute. you kind of been prepping or you prepped somewhat. And now we're going through a crash course of just hitting practice problems hard with explanations, detailed explanations. So I would suggest, I would suggest that is, is take a look at the practice course and see, uh, my video course. See if it's something that you're interested in. All right, guys. This is it for today's live stream, and I hope this was helpful. I'll be back tomorrow. Check the schedule. Uh, I'll be posting when this will be going up pretty soon. So I hope to see you guys all there tomorrow, and we will take it from there. I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.